All right, buddy, we are live. Welcome in latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Bratton. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter, and I'm joined as always by my cousin Shane, who goes by Big Orange Vowels <laughs> on Twitter. What's up, yo, TSC Homer? Hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, he's <laughs> down. Show topic here would have been perfect if uh, only your balls could have uh, sealed the deal and actually won <coughs> a, a meaningful basketball game. Absolutely ridiculous, Mike. <laughs> ridiculous. Anybody that watched that game that was just bored to death of the same old damn glitch. That's what it was. It was a glitch. It was a video glitch. You ever played with somebody, and if you use these codes right, you ought to, you go to the end and you win. That's that's what it felt like. Is like Purdue had this little glitch. This little, this little niche, this little, uh, what would you call it? Kind of like gimmick, if you will. Just, just throw it down there to the seven, eight bulldozer <laughs> that runs over everybody, but somehow never gets a foul, you know. And just let's just act like everything's fine, everything's dandy, you know. I, this, get started on this, Mike. And I, I'm trying not to. I, I mean, it's been a day, but, but I'm just, I, I'm sick and tired of, of, of. The, the stuff that's coming out after, and he's like, he's like, oh, they all overlooked me. Nobody's overlooked your big ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you went to IMG. I, I saw somebody put a tweet out there. It's like, you got scholarship offers to Purdue and Baylor. Nobody overlooked you. So uh, this, this will not work in the next deal, you know, mm-hmm. have fun in Russia, whatever. But it, it's just absolutely <laughs> – barbaric out there and I couldn't believe it I, I, I felt so bad for the Vols it wasn't even a good football game it was a glitch by this freak and I and I'm not I probably shouldn't say that Mike but I'm a freak myself you know what I'm saying 100 years ago they'd pay a nickel to see both of us in a tent <laughs> next to the bearded lady so I, I said it I'm done with it I'm I'm trying to move on with it we're a football team uh, and, and, and maybe a baseball team, but I, I will say uh, kudos to the Tide fan. They did make the Final Four, so at least we still got one SEC team in the mix. Well, I was about to say, Shane, we did, you did all that. You didn't even reference the fact Alabama just made their first Final Four. It's just you bitching about Tennessee not making it. You called it yeah. a football game. Kind of reminded me of uh, you calling Paul Feinbaum Mike about six times when you were on the show. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, let's congratulate Alabama. At least they yeah. did what Tennessee could not. And that what inspired me, Shane, to do this show topic. Things that could happen this season, 2024, that have, for the first time, that have never happened, just like Alabama reaching a Final Four. Hopefully, for them Alabama fans, the Crimson Tide winning the national championship in men's basketball. Of course, they won many in football, but... That's kind of what I wanted to, to talk about, and it would have been all. The, it would have made a hell of a lot more sense had Tennessee done it too, because Tennessee had never <laughs> made a Final Four. But hell, I, I'm, I'm sticking with it because uh, it's an accomplishment for Alabama and Nate Oates. So, uh, and and I I spent a lot of time doing some research, finding some stuff that could happen for the first time ever. How's that sound? No, it sounds great, and and it's been it's been a wild run. You know, all teams. There's been some. There's been some highs and there's been some lows. Yeah. But you know, we we got a real shot here, Mike. That we've got a team that won the regular season in Tennessee, another team <laughs> Auburn that won the SEC tournament, and potentially Alabama winning a natty. So it's like everybody's getting their participation ribbons this year. And uh, I, I'm I, I, being a Tide fan. I think you're. I mean, this is it. Like you said, that they have been recognized and known as a football school, and now you're looking here in the top four and have a real opportunity to win a national champion. So my my hats off to you guys. Right, and we got some comments already. Uh, a little low yeah. says Shane eating his first salad. Could that happen to twenty twenty four? I wouldn't bet a bet on potato that. salad. Maybe <laughs> well, Michael Riley says Billy Dapier with a winning record. Jeff says Arkansas playing competitively against Missouri. Uh oh. He also shots says fired. Vandy have a winning record. Uh, Oklahoma fans not being salty whiners. I mean, th- these are <laughs> <laughs> the comment section <laughs> is already running rampant. So uh, this is where we're going to go with this one, Shane. But hey, before we get into all that, that, that is going to be the show topic. And I got not only do I have ten, Shane, and at any point, well, maybe not at any point because I I want to run down my list. You let me know, you know, when we're end at when we're at the end of it, how many of these you think could realistically happen. 
Maybe there's some that I missed. Again, I'll give you plenty of time here, Shade, to come up with, with things that could happen for the first time in 2024. We'll get to that in a minute. And, and feel free to throw in as many uh, in the comments. If you, Hey, we, we even got Odin from all the way from Madrid. I appreciate you, Odin. Uh, Mizzou falls off his business. That's another one down here. <laughs> but before we get to the list, Shade, I, I just thought this was hilarious. And, and I sent this to you via text over the weekend. So I, I hope you recall it. And um, I wish uh, I got it here on my phone here. I apologize not having it ready. But Kirby Smart was yeah. asked about old Nick Saban retiring, Shane. And, and, and keep in mind, Nick Saban, of course, one in five against Kirby. And hell, that's let's give Kirby some credit. I mean, that's one win over Nick Saban a lot of people didn't get. <laughs> and it wasn't a <laughs> national championship game. So it's not like anything like that. But this uh, interview he had with Chris Lowe, ESPN. And I, again, I apologize not having it thrown up here on the screen. But Chris Lowe asked Kirby Smart, what will it be like in Tuscaloosa, September 28th, you don't see Nick Saban standing on the sidelines? Here's a direct quote from Kirby Smart. I'd say different for a lot of people, but for me, I love the man. I appreciate what he's done. I enjoyed competing against him. I wish he was still around so that I could get some more shots at him because I'd I hadn't done real well against him. Again, one in five against Nick Saban. We've had some really close games, some really great games, but yeah, I wish he was still there at Alabama. <laughs> and, and this is not April Fool. I know it's April, April Fools, Fools, but this is real. I mean, this is a real quote, and he's full of shit. Don't don't you think Kirby Smart's the number? He had to be more happy that Nick Saban called it quits than any coach in the country. Without a doubt, Mike. Every coach is happy Nick Saban is no longer in the SEC, you know, except maybe DeBoer, you know. But I, I, I will say this, brother. It, it, it's one of those things that you say about a fired coach, too, you know. He was a good guy, you know. He just didn't have the right opportunities and blah, blah, blah. It's the same old, same old. They're saying yep. it about Kelly up here at the Lady Balls, you know. <laughs> she was a great girl, right, you know. <laughs> we just sucked in basketball or not up to expectations of Pat Summit. But, but yes, that's that's what this is, Mike, and, and I think that uh, it's an absolute joke. But – Whatever. Say it. I thought it was an April Fool's joke, but <laughs> apparently it's as real. <laughs> yeah, I've been it, waiting for somebody to get me all day long. I, I got close. I don't know if you saw this tweet that was fired off earlier from FAU. Did you see that one? Oh, yeah. I, I shared it with you. I was trying to get you Oh, there. Oh, well, you about got me. And before <laughs> I reply to you, I Googled to see if that was even possible, you know, <laughs> because I was like, I mean, it's coming out on April 1st. And for those that don't know, there's a tweet floating around. FAU put out there that they're going to play Southern Florida on a carrier ship. And they got the football field, everything. It was a true uh, battle of the coast. Now, I, I thought – there's a chance until they were like, hey, we're going to go out in the Atlantic Ocean. I was like, all right, nobody's going to be able to watch it. I'd understand if it's on a ship and then there's some stands that you'd be able to see it. But but uh, anyway, that was <laughs> that was obviously April Souls, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, without a doubt. All right, so Shane, things that could happen that have never happened before in 2024. And I even have so many, Shane, that I, these are like some honorable mentions that I have here. Uh, Florida. Of course, th this has happened before, but it's been nearly 100 years. So I, f I thought yeah. it was we could include it. And I know, Shane, I've been singing the praises of the Florida Gators. I'm going to throw up her schedule. Shane winces every time I throw this, this thing up there. But Florida, it's not been, Shane, since 1938 that Florida has had four consecutive losing seasons. But we are on the brink of it happening, Shane. And... Florida has – it's happened one time before, 1948 to 1951. Florida has only lost to Kentucky, longest losing streak they've ever had to Kentucky. Remember, they beat them like 38 in a row, something crazy like that. If they lose to Kentucky, it is a home game this year, but it's after the Tennessee game, it's before the Georgia game. If they lose to Kentucky, that'll be four losses in a row for only the second time ever in Florida football history so again these are just honorable mentions because they have technically happened but they so what is what is the uh the the what is it again can you say what what you're florida trying to say has, again florida has only one time in their foot they've been playing football for over 100 years shane yeah not since 1935 to 1938 has florida 
had a losing season four years in a row. But if they don't have a winning season with this slate, and wow. six and I mean, even if they make a bowl game and lose it, six and seven, that's still losing season, right? So, yeah. I mean, they are on the brink of tying. Tie, so th this is technically not one because this has happened before. They are on the brink of tying something that's only been done once in Florida football history. And I would assume, Shane, if they're going to have a losing record, that probably means they're losing to Kentucky at because that's a home game. <laughs> but I mean, they they could somehow you know beat Kentucky and still have a losing record, but. Seems unlikely. You know, if you pulled up screen time and you saw all the stuff I look at, it'd be like Twitter and then YouTube and then right down there somewhere pretty close to the top would be Florida schedule. You know, because I have looked at that schedule <laughs> multiple, multiple times. We know it's daunting, but the fact that there's a chance that the Florida Gators can go four seasons in a row with a losing, uh, with a losing record is, is the reason – we are so tough on them, Mike, because this does not happen. This is a storied program. This is a program that has failed from graces, and there's a reason that we are so hard on Billy Napier. It's not that we hate Billy Napier. It's not that we hate Will Muschamp. It's not that we hate uh, old Shark NATO, whatever his name is. You know, we hate <laughs> these <Lane>. coaches <laughs> and 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 the, what they've done because Florida Gators were one of those teams that came out every year with a chance to win a national championship. Not just yep. the East, not just the SEC, a national championship. And now we're making a case on how they could potentially go four seasons in a row with a losing record. That's why we're hard on the Florida Gators. Yeah. Well, and speaking of Kentucky, Shane, here's another honorable mention. They have never... Of course, they've only played them one time. But they have never beaten Texas, Shane. <laughs> and they will have an opportunity come November 23rd. And Texas, I'm going to throw up te Texas schedule real quick because I, I think the, the path to Kentucky, pulling off that upset in Austin, you know, maybe they're on a roll, something like that. But Texas will be – that will be sandwiched between Arkansas, which is a rivalry, big-time rivalry, and then, of course, before A&M, the game – you know, so many people have circled. So maybe yeah. a little bit of a look-ahead factor, but I'm throwing it on the list, Shay. Kentucky never beaten Texas. So again, only oh and what they'll they'll have a lot more opportunities as as they have as their SEC opponents now. But that has never happened. So I feel like that's an honorable mention on this list. And a good one, Mike, and a good one. And I think that's what that is. We've talked about it in another podcast, a potential trap game for them Longhorns. And and who knows? I, I think Kentucky, there are more question marks than obviously Texas coming into that one. But all that will be sured up by the time that game kicks off. We'll know exactly the identity of Big Blue Nation, and, and maybe they will have an opportunity. Because if that quarterback especially comes if, – if he comes in there gunslinging – you know, then all of a sudden Kentucky becomes a, a favorable match in a lot of their games in that, that year. So Right. And hey, real quick, Shane, cousin Andrew, shout out. Five dollar hey. donation. Hey, buddy, finally made a live show with cousin Shane. And uh <laughs> Andrew just I don't know if you saw it yet, Shane. I know you've been working, but I retweeted it. Uh, but he just got his Tennessee koozie. So hey. pre appreciate you, cousin Thank Andrew. Thank you, cuz. Yeah. And cousin hey, cousin Sarah from the UK. Watching the show live, so I appreciate you too, cousin Sarah. But all right, how about Thank you, one, Gus. one more? Well, actually, I got a couple more that are that are honorable mention. This has happened before, Shane, but it's it's been nearly a hundred years. This is wild. I can't I can't believe this one, Shane. <laughs> Texas has an opportunity to beat Vanderbilt. They're two and seven all time against Vanderbilt. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> you know if they can't beat Vanderbilt. October twenty sixth in Nashville, they ought to just go back to the damn Big Twelve. But they are, in fact, two and seven against Vanderbilt. So that is an honorable mention. I'm throwing it on the list. How about this one, Shane? Georgia, twenty five game home winning streak. That is an all time. Georgia record. Yeah. So they have an uh, opportunity just to extend this bad boy. Again, 25 games in a row. They have won at home in Athens and also 26 consecutive SEC regular season games. So they, that is also a Georgia record. So basically every SEC home game and every home game in general, they have an opportunity to, to extend a streak that is all time in, in Georgia history. So if we're looking at the schedule, I, I already know where we're going with this one, Shane. Because <laughs> Georgia's got one hell of a schedule this year. Uh -huh. and most of the difficult games, Clemson, 
Texas, Bama, Ole Miss, and I'll even throw Florida in there because it's a rivalry. Uh, they're all away from home. And, and even Kentucky, which, you know, obviously they've owned Kentucky, but uh, Kentucky has played them about as well as anybody out of the East the last four or five years. Yeah, I, I realized last year was a beat down, but hell, Georgia beat down everybody. If, if we're looking at this schedule, Shane, home schedule, I'll, I'll run down it real quick. Dude. This is just the home games for Georgia. Tennessee Tech. <laughs> Let's just move on from that one. Auburn at home. Mississippi uh-huh. State at home. Tennessee at home. UMass at home. Or ri- rivalry game, Georgia Tech at home. If Georgia's going to have their home winning streak snapped, which game's it going to be? And don't be a homer here. <laughs> uh, so pick someone else. Uh, no, but it's, it's got to be Tennessee. Yeah, right? Tennessee, Tennessee, maybe Auburn. You know, Auburn finds a way to play big toward big games. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a real shot there. I'm curious, what's the longest home winning streak? Because there is a real shot they improve that. You know, and and you may not need to Google that. Maybe one of the listeners, if they've got the Googs on, they can uh, they can send us the the answer to that riddle. But I am curious, you know, who holds the record for the most? Because there's a real shot they do. I'll extend. tell you what, Shane. They're in the SEC. That's a that's a hint. Oh damn! You already got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and George, there's no way Georgia catches it this year. It's going to take long. Alabama. So it's, so it's a lot longer than 25. Al- nope. Alabama. LSU. Nope. Really? Oh, Texas? <laughs> Oklahoma. Oh, damn. Oh, sorry. Oklahoma. Yeah, 47 I forgot. Yeah. in a row from uh, 1953, 1957. So, how did I forget about the 50s? You know, <laughs> why? <laughs> the good old days when they had three of them, you know? <laughs> uh, no, okay. So, the, so the record. Is okay, so they but what's funny about that is if you flip it because you remember the schedules just flip next year, right. the games we just talked about Alabama, Texas, those guys are going to be coming in, so uh, it should be pretty interesting, right? So they're, they're already at 25. Let's just assume they're going to win all these home games, which, yeah, you know, they may not, but let's just assume it 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. I mean, we're you know, they. They're a couple years away, but yeah, yeah, next they still got 2025, some time. Alabama, Texas, Ole Miss, Kentucky. That's going to be difficult, but that's going to be a hell of a, a stretch. You're a gambling there. man, Mike. So from one dollar to a hundred dollars, mm-hmm. hundred being like most likely they break the record at some point, right. or one dollar least likely. What what were, where would we land if if because I'm giving them about a, a I, I'm giving them about a, a fifteen is where I'm going to go fifteen. I, 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 that's just that's too many years. There's still too many factors going on there, and the chance right. you slip up on one. But where would you put mm. five dollars, even lower? Five, because even with, lower. The, with the SEC, we're adding Texas, we're adding Oklahoma. We hopefully we they still haven't fixed the damn schedule, Shane. But they'll fix it eventually. Do you get more Alabama in there? You get more LSU in there. It's not, you know, it's not just the East. Yeah, where you're just killing everybody out there. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just think it's too hard to, to win that many. I, I appreciate you, uh, Cousin Dakota, $10. So I appreciate you. Oh, right. thank you, Cuz. Big Mizzou fan. There's a lot of Mizzou on this list, Shane. All right, so now we're into the official top 10, Shane. Things that could happen in the 2024 SEC football schedule that have never happened. These are And these are legitimate, unless my research is wrong, which is very much could be the case. But I, I spent a lot of time researching all this stuff, Shane. All right, so... And you're, I think you're going to like this one. You're really going to like this one. I was trying to piss people off with this one. We all know the decaying dynasty over and done with. <laughs> they got to board now, right? But yeah. no team in SEC history, of course, we haven't had the playoff for that long, but there's not been a single team, Shane, aside from, well, technically there is one, but no team in a non-COVID year has made the college football playoff and then the following year, not make a bowl game. Number 10, Shade, Alabama. Again, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if the wheels fall off, if Caleb DeBoer is, is a joke, if Jalen Milrow doesn't fit this scheme, can we find a path to five and seven? I, I mean, I'm just <laughs> saying, Shade, if they lose, let's say they lose to Wisconsin, and it'll, it'd be a shocker, right? But it, but it could happen. Yeah. Okay, you're losing to Wisconsin. Georgia's going to blow your doors off. So right there, you got two losses. At Tennessee, 
That's a loss. Give me that loss there. Mizzou at home. Mizzou's red hot. They're undefeated. They're trying to win a national championship. There's you lost number four. You think you're going to turn around and beat Brian Kelly in Tiger Stadium? That's <laughs> loss number five. Oklahoma Norman. This will be the game of the year for Oklahoma that, you know, at home. It's their biggest home game. Loss number six, and Hugh Freeze beat you for loss number seven. <laughs> It's never happened in a, in a non-COVID year that a team made a playoff one year, failed to make a bowl game the next. I'm just saying, Shane, that could happen this year if Alabama misses the 12-team playoff and, and, and misses bowl eligibility. I, I think it, I'm putting it on the table. Wouldn't that be something? All of a sudden, health conditions, coach steps away. Saban steps in, and guess where they go next year to Athens? And Coach Smart is like, I didn't mean it. I, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Obviously, you and I both believe that truly will not happen. But I'm saying it could, though. Could. It could. Could happen. And, and you talk about heads rolling, brother. I mean, to, to, because I don't think they understand. I really – I don't think Todd fans get it. I think they just think it's always going to be this way, you know, and a lot of them are the younger ones, you right. know, these old, these old farts that's been around a long time. They've seen some dark days down there in Tuscaloosa and they know how dark it can be. Now it may not stay there for long, but by gosh, it was there. And, and I, I feel like, like these guys just don't know that there's an opportunity. It's like, I'm watching this movie, big short. Have you ever seen that? Oh yeah. Uh, and, a great movie. And, and it's like, they never thought the housing market would just collapse, you know? But there's, like, some people saying, well, what if? What if? That's basically what we're saying here. There's a chance that Alabama doesn't make a bowl game, and then all of a sudden we're like, holy shit, we got to fire this guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it could happen like that, Shane. It'll happen quick, too. But, all right, on a more serious note, Shane, I, yeah. had, to, I had to stretch to get to that 10th one. I, I admit it. Oklahoma mm -hmm. at Auburn. Remember, it's at Auburn now. Yeah. Throw up, let's throw up uh, Auburn's schedule here. Auburn has never beaten Oklahoma. They're 0-2 all time. And barring an upset, or or what? I guess, you know, the, 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 it, barring a, a stunning upset, uh, Auburn's going to – they probably will be 4-0 when Oklahoma yeah. comes to town, don't you think? Yeah, I, I think as, as if all goes well, you know. And, and which... then Oklahoma will be coming off the Tennessee game. Which I, I mean, oh, I, and, that's gonna be and a you tough, got Texas, tough game. right? You got Texas sandwiched in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I think that is the true test. I think it's a true test for both teams. I mean, people are going to go back and forth with the Oklahoma Tennessee game because there's so much story coming into that thing. But then you can make the case that Tennessee's better than we thought, or Oklahoma's better than you know. But it's like it feels like that Auburn game is going to be the true test to find out exactly what this program is about, both of them. Like, is Auburn legit? Because like you said, very favorable schedule, all those home games. You know, this is kind of the launching point before they start getting into tougher matchups. Is Hugh Freeze like the real deal? Or is Oklahoma ready for the – are they battle-tested? Are they ready for the SEC? Because that's one of the arguments is that they're not – and that they're going to be a team that that struggles to make a bowl game. So I don't right. think that happens. But I do think that Auburn Oklahoma game that matchup is going to be more important when it happens than it sounds right now. Now I got another one similar, staying at number nine, Shane. And this I guarantee you, unless they tie, which is not possible, a first time ever, Shane. I'm gonna throw up our schedule too. South Carolina at. Oklahoma, Shane. October 19th. South Carolina and Oklahoma have never met. So whoever wins that game will be the first time <laughs> they have beaten one another in the Beamer Bowl. Remember, they hired Shane Beamer off Oklahoma staff. So it'll be a first time for Oklahoma or it'll be a first time for South Carolina. But there's going to be a lot of, you know, series like this potentially in, in the new look SEC. First time ever, South Carolina gets a win over Oklahoma or first time ever, Oklahoma gets a win over South Carolina. And that this you want to talk tough placement here, Shane, for the Sooner. Mm -hmm. or they got Texas, well, Tennessee, Auburn, Texas. Then you get that South Carolina game. And then the next week, Ole Miss. So this 
I mean, if, if Oklahoma's beat up, I realize people are down on South Carolina right now, but there's a there's an opportunity. We get some stranger things have happened. Shade Beamer and company, they beat Tennessee, they beat Clemson, they've they beat some really good teams over the years. <laughs> it sounds like you got damn evil Knievel over there next door. What's going <laughs> on? <laughs> Hey, early, it's it's way too early, and, and I love to overreact, but let's say we're going into that matchup today. Mm-hmm. What's what's the point spread, do you think? At Oklahoma, probably eight or nine in favor of the Sooners. Okay. All right, yeah. I was thinking one score right now, you know. Yeah. I'd be even tight. It'd be like a three-point, four-point game, I think, if – we're in Columbia, uh, but right. yeah, I, I think that's going to be an awesome, awesome matchup. So whoever wins, will print up the undefeated shirts, never lost. <laughs> but again, Shane, maybe I, I may amend that because again, you're saying today, but I, I need to know how do the Sooners do against Tennessee? How do they do yeah. at Auburn? How do they do against Texas? Who will be out for? I mean, they conceivably. I'm not saying here. I'm not one of these people who thinks Oklahoma's going to come in here and just get their ass kicked week in and week out. But it's not a stretch, Shane, to say that mm-hmm. the Sooners will be on a three-game losing streak heading into that South Carolina. And I mean, look at South Carolina's schedule. Very difficult games coming up, including uh, Ole Miss and Alabama. But and LSU, I mean, a lot of a lot of tough games here. But it, I mean, if we're sitting here three and three, or we pull an upset, we're four and two, and you got Oklahoma coming to town and they're on a three game skit, I may flip that and say South Carolina, maybe by a pointer point or two. I I don't know. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, Oklahoma's got that that old school SEC team in Tulane. You know, don't don't forget that old Miss game. That was an easy dub last year until it wasn't. Right. <laughs> until they're fighting for their lives. So no, that that there's a lot of things that could happen leading up to that matchup. So obviously that's a impossible question to answer right now, but it's still one that will be I, I don't think it's gonna be a blowout one way or the other, if that makes sense. Right. And then one more, Shane, just like this. Oklahoma. <laughs> it was kind of easy <laughs> to do for Oklahoma. They have never Beating Ole Miss, Shane. They're zero and one all time. Hmm. October twenty sixth. They'll have now. We were just saying, oh, they're gonna lose this one, that one, this one. Let's say they <laughs> win a couple of these. They got some momentum. They let's say they beat South Carolina for the first time ever. They'll have a, a real opportunity. And look at Ole Miss schedule. I mean, it's. I mean, I I think Ole Miss will be really good this year. But the yeah. trip to LSU is right before this, and we have seen it before where Lane Kiffin and company drop a football game and they let one game beat them twice. I have seen it. So Mm -hmm. it's not inconceivable to sit here and say that Oklahoma goes into Oxford and gets their first ever win over the uh, the Ole Miss Rebels. And and I think that's going to be a hell of a game, Shane, and – I bet I, I'm already going to beat you to it. What would be the point spread there? <laughs> I'm going to say no. – <laughs> I'd, I'd say Ole Miss by right now probably like five. Yeah, well, I you know, and one of the things about that game in particular is you could make the argument that these are two teams that may be vying for a college football playoff spot, maybe have a loss under their belt, you know, mm-hmm. playing that late in the year – you know, this is a must-win situation because they both got tough teams ahead of them beyond each, each other. So it's right. like this is one you ask Ole Miss, yeah, they they pencil in a W. You ask, you, you know, you you ask Oklahoma, well, yeah, that's that's a victory right there. So they, they both can't be right, Mike. <laughs> yep. All right, Shane. So how about this one? I think you're gonna like this one. I'm trying, don't I'm you tell to... me. Don't you tell me what I'm gonna <laughs> like, Mike. I'll be the judge of that. Here's a name to know, Shane, because they're, I mean, they're talking this kid up. He better come in and be and be amazing. And I think he will be, Shane. But everyone is he seven to, four? No, no. No. Okay. He's not Can't that, draw he, a foul. Okay. He, he's not that not big. That guy. But his name, Shane. Remember this name. You might want to write this down. Auburn freshman receiver, Cam Coleman. They're saying he's basically Julio Jones. Cam Coleman. 2.0. And what do they need at Auburn more than anything else? They need receivers, Shane. They need help to help the passing game. They need to get more explosive. And I couldn't believe this, Shane. I, I was blown away. All-time leader. Do you have any idea? You'll never guess this in a million years. Do you have any idea who's the all-time leading receiver in Auburn history as a true freshman in, in either yards or touchdowns? 
Would I know the guy if I hear the name? Let me ask you that. I don't think so. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was back in 1969, Shane, by uh, the name of Terry Beasley. He's got the all-time record for a freshman receiver at Auburn in both receiving yards, 610, and receiving touchdowns at six. I think Cam Coleman's going to break both of those records. Debut season, I think he's going to be a day one starter for Hugh. I think he's going to be the, the top receiver on the team. So if he can get to mm-hmm. 611 yards and seven touchdowns, he will shatter both, or, or not shatter, but beat uh, school records there for Auburn. So remember that name, Shane, Cam Coleman. I think he's going to be a legit player. I'm thinking Beasley now, you know. He probably, what, retired his number. He's he's operating four <laughs> subways down there in Louisiana now, you know. I don't know. Hey, uh, I want to ask you because they're comparing them. I mean, what's what's what kind of tang- what what are we dealing with here? Six. You know me. I like to know how big how big a boy are you? Yeah, you're sizing everybody up here. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, if you're compared to Megatron, you know. No, I didn't say Megatron. I said Julio. Oh well, even Julio's big boy, you know. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he's. I mean, he's six three, hundred ninety pounds. Okay, well, like if, I get I mean, that. If you see, if you see photos of Auburn right now at spring, yeah, it looks like a little, a bunch of children, and then a grown man playing receiver, and the grown man is the true freshman that just yeah. is in his first spring at the Auburn Tigers. I, I think he's going to kill it there for uh, for Hugh Freeze and company. Yeah, like a Purdue basketball team. You know, my nephew called him uh what did he name him? Uh what's the elf um uh, elf? What is his name? Buddy? Buddy. Yeah, I called him Buddy the Elf. <laughs> <laughs> he said, You get Buddy the Elf out of here, you know? I was like, that's, that's great. All right, sorry. Last last thing I'll say about Purdue. All right, and, and then I, I searched high and low for this shade, and I and I don't think Will Rogers counts because he started not immediately, but he did start during the COVID year here. But I tried to find most passing yards an SEC quarterback has ever had in his first season as a starter. Yeah. And, again, I, I did uh, high and low. I could be wrong on this. But at least we could just go LSU if we want here. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's what it was. But LSU, most passing yards ever, first season as a starting quarterback – Pretty easy. You probably know who it is, right? LSU? Yes, sir. Joey Burrow? Joe Burrow, 2,894 passing yards for Joe Burrow. Now, he had like 9,000 the next year, so his numbers are incredible. But his first season, only 2,894 passing yards. Garrett Nussmeyer is going to break that record for most passing yards for a first-year LSU signal caller. How, How do you feel about that? I like it. I like it because a lot of people just think they're going to mimic LSU offense last year. Nah, Nussmeyer is not Daniels, you know. They're right. going to do it through the air, and, and I think that's what Kelly's going to do. So expect more yardage, especially with those receivers. Yeah, and, and I keep hearing great things about, uh, you know, they may not have a Malik Neighbors or Brian Thomas, but they got about six or seven guys they can count on, spread yeah. the ball around. They got an experienced offensive line. I think they're going to give him the because they need the protection because he's he's a different player than Jay Nails, but arguably a better arm. So, uh, yeah, I think Garrett Nussmeyer is, is going to put up at least 2,900 passing yards. So he's going to set a new LSU record there. How about this one, Shane? I, I know you're going to like this one. I had to do, I, I really had to do some research on this one. Jackson Dart, opportunity. And I, I'm just curious to know whether you think this, this happens or not. Jackson Dart could become the all-time Ole Miss leading passer. And keep in mind, he'll be, if he does it, only three years there at Ole Miss. All-time leader is Eli Manning with yeah. 10,019 passing yards. Jackson Dart, 3,364 passing yards away. Uh, or no, excuse me, 3,000. 781 away. Last year, he had 3,364. So he's got to beat it by, you know, his pace to what he did by about 400 yards. But, again, I think Ole Miss is going to be really good. Maybe an SEC championship. Maybe a college football playoff. We're going to have more games, potentially. If we have more games, I think Jackson Dart is going to shatter the all-time Ole Miss passing yards 
What do you think about? It? So basically, I'm asking you, can he get to 3,800 passing yards? Yeah, no, I think that's a great point that you brought up. Is with these playoffs, we're going to have more football games, and that's going to keep growing. It sounds like as right. the playoffs keep expanding. So some of these records that have probably been around, thought you'd never see them broken. There's a real shot you're going to see it just because we're going to have more football games to get it done in. And like you said, Ole Miss, if they make a run. We're talking at least an extra football game in there to, to pick up two even 200 yards passing We're off of last season. You're, you're right there in the mix. Right, and don't forget, Shane, I mean, Kiffin came out here and says, this helmet communication, that's a cheat code. Uh, he's got all these receivers back. Quinshawn Junkins is now at Ohio State. I'm, I don't think that necessarily turns Ole Miss into, like, Mike Leach offense where we're passing it nonstop, but I – you know, I, I think we'll, we'll lean a little bit more to the past than we have yeah. in previous years. So I'm putting that all together. That's why it made a little bit higher on my list. I think he gets it done. Now, how about this, Shane? This, this blew me away. And this may be difficult to get, but do you, have, you probably don't know this name either. Missouri, all-time leading receiver. Do you have any idea who it is? <sighs> His first no. name's Denario. <laughs> Denario <laughs> Alexander. So... Yeah. I'm quite unfamiliar with that name as well, Shane. But Luther Burden, as of today, I couldn't believe it, Shane. This this blew my damn mind here. In two seasons, Luther Burden, 1,191 receiving yards away from becoming the all-time leading receiver in Missouri history in just three seasons. Now, he's got over 1,500 receiving yards now, so he would need a career year. You know, they use him all over the field. He rushes, he returns, he does a lot of things. So, and, and I know they got a lot of other weapons, so they, they may not force feed him, but this is another one, Shane. Possible SEC championship, possible college football playoff, more games. I think, so basically I'm asking you, can Luther Burton get to 1,200 receiving yards? Yeah. And I think he is fully capable of doing that. Yeah, absolutely, man. And for starters, I didn't know there'd be so much math involved with today's show. But <laughs> I, I, the thing about Luther, he's going to get his. There'll be games that, like you said, he's blanketed, and they're all going to – every single game he goes to, he is going to be the emphasis of that defense. But he still will find targets. But the thing about Luther's is there's going to be that game, maybe two games, where he just goes – nuts you know what i'm saying 300 200 yards it's feasible for him to just go crazy and then all of a sudden he's got a big step toward that record so mm -hmm. yeah and, and once they get close one thing i like about drink is he knows this he keeps up with this stuff if he knows that luther's about to get it don't think he won't force him a little bit to get to that level because he loves and not just that not just him but he loves when his kids do something well and they need to be you know put on a pedestal for a good reason yep all right how about this one Chad? i couldn't believe it i'm gonna throw up a schedule because this seems like a slam dunk here but old miss mm -hmm. never had back-to-back -back 10 win seasons hmm. and the over under of course they've only had a couple 10 win seasons in, in history but, but i mean it it so basically, we're trying to find three losses here in a regular season. Otherwise, Ole Miss is going to shut. And again, we don't know injuries, things of that nature. But who are we losing to here? I mean, Georgia at home, Georgia is certainly going to be favored. Yeah. But that doesn't mean Ole Miss can't beat them. But let's just say that's a loss. So maybe at LSU, we'll see how good LSU is. But I, to me, Shay, that's that's close to a toss-up. But, it, but right. again, let's give that to LSU because just because it's at home, it'll probably be a night game. So basically, we got to find another loss on the schedule. And there's certainly, you know, I'm basically removing the top row. <laughs> Old Miss should kill all those teams. <laughs> but I'm basically just trying to find a, uh, uh, you know, an SEC game that Old Miss could conceivably lose here. And I guess maybe Oklahoma, Arkansas plays them really tough in Fayetteville. There's always the swamp. But this this almost feels like a guarantee to me. It feels like it. It feels like it. But the thing is, you know, as you look over there, there Vegas has only got them nine and a half. That's what scared me. I thought this would be a no brainer ten and a half uh, when it came out. So the fact it came came out like this, I part of me is like that little devil on my shoulder says, you know, Lane's going <laughs> to screw something up. That's part of of what goes in because when I look at the schedule, I look at LSU. 
I look at Georgia, and I look at Oklahoma. So those out of those three, do they lose all three of them, or do they – they drop two. Even if they drop two, we're, we're still confident in them. But mm-hmm. I think it's going to boil down to that LSU, Oklahoma, those games back to back. Right? Do they lose one of both of them? Possibly, but I doubt it. I think they find a way to at least win one of them. Shane, we're so damn crazy down here. If yeah. they go nine and three or eight and four, are we putting Lane on the hot seat? No, not After the all hot this playoff seat. talk. Yeah, <laughs> I'd put his ass right on the hot seat. I'll he, be on fine Bob blasting him, say they should fire him. There's pressure. There's pressure, <laughs> and rightfully so. You know, because now you're talking about people's money. People put right. their hard work and money into this program because you promised them something, and yeah. that's what that's when it that's when it changes. Because when the money stops coming in, the kids stop getting paid. Guess yep. where they don't want to play? Ole Miss. They want to go mm-hmm. somewhere else. So. That's it's a slippery slope and it's a it's a bet. It's like one of those that you're just kind of going all in on and you're praying as an old miss fan that it works or comes close to working because then we can continue to do it. But if it blows up in your face, then you've got fifteen other squads sitting around you waiting. They they got bookmarks they're ready to throw out at you. <laughs> now how about this one, Shane? I know I am I'm, I'm saving the best for the last year because I I got a feeling you're gonna love this one. Tennessee yeah. has never had a Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah, They have the most runners-up four in the award history. I mean, so they've come close, but they ain't getting it done. Nico captures Tennessee's first-ever Heisman. I'm throwing that out there. How about this? Ole Miss, they've never even had someone in the top two. So I think Jackson Dart could possibly get there. I think you you're hoping for Nico Jackson number two. I mean, still that would it'd be a first time ever. And how about this? Missouri has never had anyone finish in the top three of a Heisman. Hell, they could have two this year. Shane Brady yeah. Cook, Luther Burden. I'm just throwing all these guys out there. Nico winning a Heisman, Jackson Dart finishing in top two, Brady Cook or Luther Burden in the top three. Which one you go with, Shane? What's the most realistic here? Realistic. Well, <laughs> <laughs> give me Nico, baby. Now, and I'm going to tell you why. Calm down, everybody else, because I think Jackson Dart is. is if you told me, let's just say, win the Heisman. Does yeah. somebody? Does Nico? Because more likely that that Cook. Makes the top three. I I'll, I think I would buy that bet before I'd buy anything. But let's just talk about winning those three guys: Jackson Dart, Nico, uh, Jackson Dart. I've I probably would have the favorite um, because I think Mizzou does a great job of evenly distributing success. And, right. and sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. It's a good thing for wins and losses. It's a bad thing if you're looking for this stupid individual trophy that they like to hand out at the end of the year to the team that has potentially the best record. It, it's, it's, it's a stupid bet. But you got to remember, half these people that are voting for this don't even know. They can't name three people off Mizzou's roster, you know. Maybe, maybe Dart, you know, they'll they'll get behind that one, uh, and and you know, if they make a, a push and and beat an LSU in Oklahoma, and then all of a sudden going in that Georgia game when those when people are starting to put in those bets, does he get the pick? Absolutely, I could definitely see that happen. But the thing about Nico is it's going to be an individual effort similar to Jane Daniels. This is a guy that's just a human highlight reel that will find ways. I mean, it, it won't blow my mind if he doesn't have three or four games this year with 100 yards rushing. That's what people like if you vote for the Heisman. So that's why I'm a little higher on him. Well, it's kind of funny. Mr. Bassman says uh, Tennessee hype living off the hooker days. Like that was in World War II or something. Shit. I mean, my goodness, that was. I can, you know, we were at some of those games just just a couple of years ago. You know what I mean? Like, you got that. a lineman. You got you got receivers coming up. I mean, that, that, you talk about some 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 kids unproven that are picking up a lot of hype. Tennessee's got some of them, and you know, short of health, it's. It, but either 
you can make a case for all three of them. I thought last year, I thought Brady should have been in, uh, in, in contention for the Heisman. For what he started and how he ended, you know. So, I mean, you could go round and round with all three of those guys. Right. All right, how about this, Shane? I think you're really going to like this one, too. So I'm throwing the love around. And one of these, well, two of these, super obvious. But SEC championship game, there's a couple yeah. teams who have never made it. And, yes, I'm throwing Texas and Oklahoma in there because, they, you know, they obviously they've not played in it. But how about an Ole Miss-Texas SEC championship? It would be the oh. first for both. Or we could even throw A&M in there. I, I think that's underrated. They're a and M's not a favorite by any means to get it done. It would be a, a you know, a surprising development. But Mike Elko walked into Duke and turned that into a winner immediately. He doesn't have to to necessarily do that at A and M. They got all the talent in the world. They just got to not screw it up. So I'm throwing Texas A and M into that conversation as well. But it, so maybe of all those, Ole Miss, Texas, Texas A and M, and Oklahoma, none of them. Have reached that, an SEC championship. Wh- which do you think is most likely this fall? That's the only three. It seems like there should be more. That... Uh, well, no, Kentucky's not done it. Vanderbilt yeah. has not done it. I think that's it. I think that's the list. Has Ole Miss done it? Has Mississippi State? Have Ole Miss Mississippi never, State's been there? Never. Mississippi State's been there. Yeah. Ole Miss hasn't? I think that's your obvious answer, Ole Miss. But uh, Texas, Texas, am I picking A&M? one or both of them? You got to pick one that'll make their first SEC championship. Uh, I'm going with Texas this year. Um, like, like maybe long term. Like, if Texas doesn't do it, mm-hmm. I may, I may lean more toward maybe A and M. Um, but I like Texas just because the schedule this year. I just think they they went really easy on them, and uh, and I'm not saying there's not losses in there. Uh, Obviously, A and M could be a good one, but that Georgia, Oklahoma, those two back to back. I think if you could manage to get by one of those, um, there's a real shot that you run the board and and find yourself in an, another in an SEC championship your first year. You know, Mizzou did it their first year. Why can't Texas do it? Mm. Because the SEC is a lot tougher these days. That's what I think about that, Shane. <laughs> well, I, there's no East and West. And what's cool about that is there may be a day. It may not be this year, Mike, but there may be a day that a Texas and Texas A&M play each other mm-hmm. and the very next week they have the SEC championship again. Because there's not the East, there's not the West. You know, some of these rivalries that we've seen in the past, uh, uh, there's there's a real shot that we get them games back-to-back more often. Yeah. And I, shout out Cousin Phillip. He says, Kentucky has won an SEC championship at Bear Bryant, but not made the championship yet because they didn't have it back in. So that's yeah. that's what we're talking about here. But, uh, ooh, Cousin Rick, appreciate you, $20. A&M beats Texas the last game. Oh. Play Ole Miss in the SEC championship. I'd, I'd love that because we have <laughs> Ole Miss and A&M, which hate each other. Maybe they won't hate each other as much. I mean, I mean they, I'm sure they still hate Kiffin, but uh, it, it's not Jimbo Kiffin. You know, remember all the bad blood there. So uh, they're, they're certainly not friendly, but that'd be one hell of an SEC championship game, don't you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cousin Rick coming through. Hey, <laughs> let me ask you, new head coaches – into the mm-hmm. SEC, if you had to pick one of those taking a team to the SEC championship, who you got? So we're are we we're counting Sark and um, uh, no, no, because no? they're they're not new coaches. We're talking about because technically they well, I guess you know what I'm making my own list here, Mike. No, right. I'm not counting them. I'm talking about the new guys in here, the the Elkos and like which one. Do you feel is more likely to take their team to an SEC championship now? Oh, it's got to be Mike Elko, don't you think? I mean, DeBoer. I mean, oh, I mean, you, oh yeah, shit. I always, yeah, I always forget about that boring DeBoer is what I call him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean he'll get there. But so so basically, I guess it's coming down to because I don't think Jeff Lebby. I mean, maybe, but it yeah, will count Lebby in there. Right, right. Uh, yeah, DeBoer, DeBoer would be the answer. But, again, 
Shane, if I'm a betting man, yeah, and you're asking me, who's more likely to be there in five years, Mike Elko or or Kalen DeBoer? Yeah, I'm putting a mortgage on Mike Elko. I think he'll be there a long time. I don't. I, don't, I just Kalen DeBoer could be awesome. Yeah, I think he is a great coach, but he does not know what he's getting himself into here, Shane. He really doesn't. And the first time they lose. The first time there's some shenanigans. The first time this the fan base turned, and they're going to turn on his ass, Shane. Yep. Let's throw up our schedule real quick. They let's say they get whooped. They may beat Georgia. Let's you know we got to probably stop saying they're going to lose, get ass handed to, to to Georgia. But let's say they beat Georgia, they'll be all in. We're go, we're going to win it all. Yeah, October nineteenth, when they lose to Tennessee. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be putting for sale signs in his house, and then Missouri comes around. We always—I mean, we've never lost to Missouri. Missouri, Missouri beats them, and then if LSU beats them, he's probably not even the coach next year. You know what I mean? Like it'll turn that damn quick, Shane. You—you you bet your ass it will, and he'll be saying, "What the hell did I get into leaving Washington, coming down here to these this this place where these these people are crazy, Shane?" And yeah. here's a perfect. Uh, I, I know this is not a you know this may not make sense as a comparison. Bo Nix, he was raised to be Auburn's quarterback. He was a five star. He came out as a freshman, and he was you know he was not spectacular, but he was solid. He he beat Alabama. That's what you got to do as Auburn's quarterback. They ran his ass out because he was not what they thought he could be. And he went to Oregon. Right. And he was also I mean we're just damn crazy down here, Shane. And I don't care how good Kalen DeBoer is. He's he's not not ready for it. And no. now he he may be. He may be by the end of the year, but he does not know what he's getting himself into. And as soon as they turn on him, we'll see how he reacts then cuz they're going to turn on his ass. And then watch week 4, they beat the Georgia Bulldogs and the Tide fans come back at your ass again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll happen. It'll happen. Trust me. <laughs> oh, that's who was on that dirt bike, wasn't it? Marlon. So as you start talking bad about him, he got on his little bike and he's heading out to Aspen <laughs> with a suitcase. <laughs> All right, number one, Shane, most likely to happen. It's never happened. Again, this is kind of obvious, but I, I saved it for the end here. Because I think it's good. I think this is likely to happen to a couple of these guys, Shane. First time making the college football playoff. I'll, yeah. I'll let you – you could probably guess most of these. Why, why don't you guess the, the ones I got? Say that. Say it again. Sorry. I, do, I was First thinking the motorcycle again. First time making the college football playoff. These, these programs have literally never made the college football playoff. I think it happens in 2024. I got a couple mm. listed here. Uh, college football playoff. Uh, give me my Tennessee balls. Correct. Give me – the playoffs. This is not uh, a trick question. <laughs> There's twelve yeah, teams. Well, <laughs> no, yeah, but I'm thinking the playoffs. You know, the playoffs right. haven't been around that long. Correct. Uh, so I'm trying to think of teams that's not been in it that could be in it. Um, Ole Miss. Bingo. I know they got one more. Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. So those are the oh. three. I think all three of them can make it. And I even put A and M into into the conversation. I don't think all these teams are going to make it. I think they'll all be competing for it, but we can't rule out Georgia's, obviously, uh, unless something terrible happens. They're going to make the 12-team playoff. Yeah. Alabama's, you know, we'll see. But, again, we're running out of spots here. So I, I, I'd i love it if six, seven teams from the SEC make the playoff every year. It's probably not going to happen, Shane. It's probably going to be three, three to five every year. But I think Ole Miss, Missouri, Tennessee – I think two of those for sure make it, and I think all three can make it this year. And then, so I'm trying to think. So LSU's been in it, Georgia, Texas, Oklahoma. Um, anybody else been in it that I'm not thinking of here? So that uh, those those four have been in it, mm-hmm. and then you're talking about those three. That's seven. That leaves. Uh, yeah, Oklahoma, there, Oklahoma has made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Um, so I don't know, man. I you know that's the crazy part is, there with the expansion. There's we're looking two lost teams. There's a, there is even a real shot, Mike, that a three lost team were making the case on why they should be in the tournament or uh, the playoffs. So I, I I think 
there's going to be more teams. We revisit this list here in 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. There's going to be the Mizzou's that pop up. There's going to be the Ole Miss's that pop up. South Carolina, all it takes is one good class, and then they're right there in the mix. Florida, if if Billy's not the guy and they find the guy, you know, uh, <laughs> next thing you know, Florida's in the mix again. So I, I think there's – if you think about SEC football in years past, how many times has there been some great football teams that never got the opportunity to to, to make it to a postseason? You know, I, there's been a ton of them, and and I think that's the cool thing about this playoff is we're going to get to see some of these great teams play out toward the end of the year. So, yeah, that's a list that's going to keep growing. And the only thing I would say, Shane, again, th three lost teams make the playoff, perhaps. I kind of hate that, that that we have to discuss that, but it is what it is. But these teams, I'm gonna throw up Tennessee schedule. Uh, you, you know, if you're losing to Georgia and Alabama, yeah. And even if you run the table the rest of the way, ten and two, yeah. I don't know if you're making the playoff unless those are competitive games. Because again, well, maybe you deserve to be in the top twelve, but again, it's not even gonna be the exactly the top twelve that gets in. It's it's all about, you know, conference winners and, and there's a couple at large and all that. But who, I mean, what resume is getting you in if now Oklahoma could be really good, but if you're beating Arkansas, Florida, who most people think the coach is going to be fired, Kentucky, Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, they're not going to put you in there, I don't think. Unless, you know, you need a win over Alabama, you need a win over Georgia. And, and same deal as Mizzou. We've talked about this before, so we don't have to completely rehash it. But let's say you you lose to Bama, and you lose to A and M. Mm -hmm. They they're gonna put you in for for beating Arkansas or Arkansas, Auburn, Mississippi State, South Carolina, Oklahoma. I don't think so. I don't think so, Shane. And, and same thing with Ole Miss. You lose to Georgia, you lose to LSU. We're gonna put you in because you beat Kentucky, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Florida, and Mississippi State. I don't know, man. I don't know. You're, I'm so, you're putting it in the committee's hands, and, and I'm not seeing a lot of big-time wins there. You're going to like this, Mike. This is possibly the – maybe the next show will be the first time Mike makes it from start to finish without being negative at least <laughs> once. <laughs> Put your positive hat on, Mike. And, and all three of those teams, they go two losses, they're getting in. Why? Because they'll be the top, they'll be in the top 12, you know, because if the, even if we went back to BCS days and they ran that schedule at the end of the season when they do the ranks, I guarantee you, even though they lost to a Georgia and a, whatever, it's still going to be a, a top 12 program. But see, that's not exactly how they're doing it, Shane. They're doing no, a we're, they're know, doing a, a group of five gets in there. We'll be like ranked twenty six. So now we're into the top eleven. Uh, the ACC champs going to get in. They could be number twenty. They get now we're in the top ten. You know what I mean? Like spots. I don't, I, I don't agree I'm with not, doing it that way, but I'm, that's the way I'm, they're going to do it. Now I, gonna, I, I will say this. Maybe, maybe you're right here. Like let uh, again. Let's uh, let's use Ole Miss as an example. Uh, let's say you lose to Georgia and you lose to LSU. But that gets you to the SEC championship, yeah. and you face Georgia again. You beat them in the SEC championship. You you are guaranteed a spot in. So that is the path to where if you lose, you know your marquee game or two, you make the conference championship. You win the conference. All the conference champions guaranteed in the playoff to to make it. So that's the only path. I mean, you basically got to redeem yourself against these teams you lose to. So that that could happen. I hope it's I hope it's just messy messy as hell, you know. <laughs> I hope there's like one loss here, two loss there, and we're like, I don't know, man. There should be eight SEC teams in the playoffs, so they're going to expand it. They're going to change it, but I think this year uh, it's going to be very very interesting to see how that top those those twelve spots are divvied up. Right. Yeah, I, I can't wait. And that's because why I, that's the argument that Sankey's making, you know, mm -hmm. and it makes sense. There shouldn't be like, hey, like you said, a three-loss ACC team making right. it to the playoff because they won that shitty conference, you know. It shouldn't happen that way. Sankey wants 12 at-large <laughs> bids, and I think he's got a point. You know, because it should be the, should be the best 12. 
that's what it is. People want to watch 12 good games right. or six good games. So that that's why it should be the 12. I'm, I'm totally on board with it. And I'm not trying to be an SEC homer here, but how many times in the play, in the playoff spot, it seems like there's, there's two good teams, there's one questionable team, and there's that team, you know? And it's that team that just gets destroyed on national TV. It's people stop watching at halftime, and they shouldn't have been <laughs> wasting a spot that, you know, the Georgia Bulldogs should have been occupying. Right, right. But that's why this coming season, we say it every year, Shane, but this is not that it's never not true, but it's really true this year, Shane. New SEC, no divisions. We got Texas. We got Oklahoma. Yep. We got a 12-team playoff. We got so much teams like Ole Miss and Missouri that didn't – not a prayer that they have a prayer four or five years ago to make the playoff. They're favored to make the playoff. I mean, this is going to be one hell of a college football season, and I cannot wait for it. You know what? And we're going to be here all the way through, <laughs> brother. We got, we got so much coming up, guys. Don't forget that next portal is about to open up. You right. thought things were wild in the first one? Wait till you see the second one. <laughs> yeah, that's right around the corner. Two weeks away. We got, uh, what, 15 spring games in the next two weeks as well. So yep. keep keep it uh, posted on the channel. We're going to be updating each and every one and, and keep going content. I know we took a little break for uh, Easter. We got... The Fine Bomb interview, I'm probably putting that out on Saturday. I've already got the trailer ready. So, yeah, we got some great stuff coming up on the show. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to the video. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, you got anything, brother, before we hang off the line? No. Uh, good luck, Bama. You know, the rest, all the, the other 15, we've moved on. We're ready for college football. So, uh, but hey, seriously, I, I hope everybody enjoyed time with their, their family. Uh, Easter was fantastic. I don't know about you, Mike, but we had an absolute blast here. And uh, look forward to, uh, to some more action coming up. Uh, you know, we're going to have some lulls with the coaches, but there's never lulls with this talent. The, the, the recruiting trail is heating up. Uh, yep. So be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Have that notification on because when something crazy happens, we will jump on and we want you to be there to have some cold beers and hang out with us. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate each and every one of you, especially those on the live show. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> See you guys.